Hi there. Hello, everyone. My name is Brody with MCFC, and I'm speaking with Denzel Mara. How are you, buddy? Uh, how's the day been so far? Uh, the day's been good. Um, I have a workout later on today, but I've just been relaxing. So nice. Hang around the house. Well, you got a lot of plants and lights. It, look, it looks just really, really nice there. You know. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> is it the girlfriend that's doing the cleaning, or is it you? Uh, yeah, definitely the girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same thing on my boat. So I always, I always wonder every now and again, you got the guy like, no, I come home and then I just start cleaning, you know, going to town. I'm like, oh man, God bless your heart. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to, you're going to be fighting uh, for us on April 27th. How, how do you feel about that? And how do you feel about your opponent? Yeah, I feel good. Um, I, It's been about a year since I've been in. So um, just ready to get going again. Um, I've still been training the whole time, so I think I've improved a lot. Um, I'm just ready to prove that. And, um, yeah, about my opponent, um, I know he's a big wrestler, so, but I also wrestled my whole life, so I'm ready to, you know, go there if it goes that direction, but I'm also comfortable just standing, so. Nice. But, where, where did you wrestle? Uh, so I wrestled, um, I'm originally from Alaska, so I grew up wrestling okay. there. Um, but then I went to college for two years in Washington State um, at Grace Harbor mm -hmm. College, and then I okay. transferred. And then I transferred to New Mexico Highlands University, so it's a D two. Um, but D two, okay, yeah. I was born in Tacoma, so I actually knew the college right away when you were talking about Washington. So yeah. Oh, awesome! Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, uh, so, so, so you said you took a break for about a year. Um, can I ask why or personal got for injury, something like that? Uh, no, you know, um, I've just been working with Brock and, um, we have been looking for fights, but some fell through, some just didn't happen. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm very thankful that, you know, my opponent took this fight because I've been wanting to get back in there. So, you know, glad, but I've, I've heard that a lot. You know, that I, I don't know why, but I just immediately think of Cain Velasquez because they talked about it so much. But bigger guys, you know, amateurs and stuff, like it's really hard for, for you guys to get fights in amateurs. Right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's almost like – I've noticed a lot of the 205ers have kind of been dropping to 85 too. So um, I think there's just mm -hmm. maybe not enough opponents around or I'm not really sure why, but. Yeah. Well, you know, wait, it, everybody's getting so good about cutting weight too. So I, right. that would probably explain it too. I mean, and it's just such a big gap. You know, a lot of guys are like walking around like 215, maybe 220 and like cutting like 15 pounds. And, you know, like I would, and not to talk about myself, but I would cut more weight, you know, wrestling than, you know, 15 pounds and stuff like that. So, you know, bigger right. you are kind of, it just depends though. Some guys are all different, you know, like yeah. they, they, some guys, some guys just sweat it all out or water load or whatever they want to do really. Right. And that's kind of how I am right now. Yeah. Um, I don't really have to cut to 205, so it's it's pretty nice mm -hmm. transition. So maybe eventually I'll go down to 85 or do some catch weight fights, but I'm comfortable at either weight. So yeah, did you ever have to cut a lot of weight in college? Uh, for for 85, it's a little bit harder. Um, I would say it's mm -hmm. like at an actual cut, whereas now you know it's just like being consistent, eating healthy. Um, mm -hmm. but, yeah. But it, it is a lot harder in wrestling, too. It is a lot harder oh, in wrestling, yeah. too, because you got to make weight every week and you got to compete like mm -hmm. within hours or, you know, so fighting, you get I that. Get recovery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It definitely helps. I talk about that all the time. Like, I'd cut about like 25 pounds. I'd walk around like 150 pounds and cut to 126, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, like 148 to 151. You, you, as a wrestler, you just kind of get used to them roughly around there. But, you know, twice a week, every week. Oh. Like if I got punched in the head too, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> right? It would have been so bad. I got teachers would walk up to me because the cheeks would be all sunken, you know, and they would always ask me like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm okay." <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you gonna be go uh, doing in the meantime, uh, training wise? Are you gonna be same old, same old, or do you just kind of have a, a specific schedule you like to keep? Because you said you haven't had too many fights, so. Is there, do you kind of have a set game plan you always like to do now, or do you kind of you're at a, such a great gym? Are you kind of open to I don't know suggestions and things? Yeah, you know I'm I'm very thankful. Um, 
I have great coaches with, you know, Brock Larson and he was in the UFC before. So he, he definitely helps mm -hmm. guide us in the direction that we need to be. And then I have a lot of pro teammates, you know, Angel, um, Tyler, who's also fighting on this card, um, Cody mm -hmm. Milhausen, Joey Hart, Derek, um, Tanner. So, you know, just listening to those guys that have done it before me um, and just using their guidance, but really just kind of stepping up the intensity. Um, and, you know, I, I'm still weight training, so that helps. Um, and dealing with, like, you know, weight training, mobility work. Um, but just the, you know, injury prevention stuff and stay strong. And then so just working with my coach on, like, the actual MMA aspect. But Yeah, they, they, your Brock came from, like, a different era, you know. There's just – it's so different. It's not like it's not like boxing or something like that. You watch like a, a boxing fight from the seventies, and it almost looks similar to a boxing fight nowadays. You know, like MMA right. is just so such a new sport, so so crazy. Like I can't, I can't imagine all the all the stuff that you know that that they did. God forbid, like cutting weight wrong and all kinds of crazy stuff. Speaking of Angel, I don't know why, but I just they, the guy that he fought fought Saturday, and I was yeah. and I liked the guy who's fighting, and so I wanted that guy. I liked Angel as soon. When I was watching Contender Series and he said he was from Minnesota, I didn't know. And I got super excited. And like, oh, so I wanted him to win so bad. So I did not. I, I thought the other guy won. But Danny, the, the guy that he fought, man, that guy's a tough SOB. Right. Yeah. But you could kind of see, too, Um, in Danny's yeah. fight yesterday, yeah. he's a, a little more grappling heavy. So, I mean, yeah. uh, and Angel fights in a couple of weeks. So I'm pretty excited for that. Um, He should put oh, on another awesome. pitch. He ripped, he rips the body like a pro boxer. Like I was, I was watching this. I never knew. I, I've never seen him in my life. And he, he made me groan when I was watching that Danny Silva fight. And then, and then the best part about that whole thing was Cub Swanson saying like, that guy, that guy's effing nuts. <laughs> and talking about Angel, I'm like, holy crap. Like I, like that was one of the better fights I've ever seen a contender series. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and seeing like Dana, Dana walk into the um uh, to the uh, locker room and everything and talk to him yes yes <laughs> it felt like it felt like ultimate fighter season one where they both got contracts you know right no mm -hmm. so so what uh so how are you enjoying how are you enjoying the cold weather and everything like that I I feel I don't understand what's going on if we're getting like 70 degrees and then 40 degrees is that fun or do you do a lot of like road work I can't imagine running when it's 70 degrees is nice and then all of a sudden it drops down to 30 You're like what is going on here <laughs> right yeah so <laughs> i well i have a gym membership and then you know like a salt yep. bike so i like to do a lot of cardio on there um but yeah mm. i definitely i'm excited for it to be summer so to run outside a little bit more but sometimes you just oh, gotta yeah, bundle up you know but yeah mm -hmm. well they yeah. say we live longer in the cold but we that just means that we suffer more <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well you know i always think about it all the time imagine if we had like hurricane if we if we lived in florida and we needed hurricane insurance like, right. oh my god at least we get like snowed in or something like that you know all you have to do is hop out a window and shovel the the door off no big deal right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh what are you doing for fun mma wise you know you're an mma fighter do you sit down and you watch stuff or are you the type because i've i've heard i've heard all kinds of stuff like guys are really really obsessed or guys don't even watch at all yeah um you know i typically watch every card that i can um sometimes mm -hmm. we'll we'll have a uh, fight shows together with the team um and then you know I, a lot of my teammates are like big on watching film so i take advice on like fighters to watch from their perspective and you know kind of get some hints on nice. different things but yeah there's so there's so many good like highlights videos on YouTube and stuff like that. I probably have about five of them on my phone, you know, um, but they'll, you know, they'll slow down stuff and add effects to it and everything. You're watching like a fight from the 70s and it's slowed down. And it's like a Tommy Hearns, like a highlight or something like that. It's just awesome. Right. I love that. Kind of stuff. But if you're if you're you know, it's kind of hard to take. Um, I don't know to take uh well no it's it is MMA so you can take bits and pieces but but like Muay Thai and boxing is very different if you do, do you like watching that stuff or is it just strictly MMA you know are you like a kickboxing fan or like a one championship they have a lot of Muay Thai and things 
Yeah, um, you know, honestly, I mostly watch just MMA, but I will mm -hmm. say that we do have like Muay Thai at our gym and boxing. Um, so we, we do train all of that stuff and get into the specifics. And, you know, you can see the difference of what's, what's going to work in Muay Thai versus doing Muay Thai and MMA. You know, there's definitely a difference. So, oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. There's like a lot of plotting and stuff like that. You can always tell if a guy trained in, in Tiger Muay Thai. Well, not not a hundred percent, but you know what I mean. You can you can always tell, like a little Khalil round tree kind of, right? You know, like pulling the knees up high, bouncing <laughs> in. Or yeah. even in boxing, you could you could hide behind the big gloves a little easier, you know. In MMA, yeah, we got barely protecting your hands. So mm -hmm. I always try to bring up people like like feet. You know, like the distance is so crazy. Because, you know, you see boxers, I mean, their feet are touching. Like, when do you ever see that in MMA? Like, guys are actually touching right in front of each other. Like, that's just not a thing. All right. Yeah, it'd be crazy to sit there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I try to, yeah, I try to explain it all the time. Like, look at the guy's feet. Look what they're doing, you know, because you see like a, like a Sean O'Malley, you know, he's standing at Southpaw and he'll throw a cross and he'll bring his front leg forward so he can throw a one-two in orthodox afterward. Like, he landed that on Cheeto all night long. I'm like, that's so cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so cool when you can break down that I've been watching forever. And even I, you know, I'm, I've never done it a day in my life, but even I know a lot. And then when you actually like watch real professionals or guys like a Luke Thomas or anything that breaks stuff down, you always just sit there. Like, wow, I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is there anything you'd like to say? Anybody you'd like to uh, thank before we get going? Yeah. Um, you know, of course I just want to, you know, I've been training for a couple of years to get this point. Um, so I just want to mm -hmm. thank uh, my gym. So start BJJ and then Freya's BJJ in Alexandria. Um, and then, of course, you know, my coaches, Brock, David, Gabe, Jess, um, that helped me get here. And then, you know, all my teammates that I, I mentioned earlier. And then we, we do have some some other amateurs coming up. So. You know, Augie, Ashton, Jaden, um, and then Jesse. So, you know, I think Star PJJ is gonna is in a good spot, and you know, I think we're gonna really take over the scene in Minnesota in these come coming up years. But, oh, I can't wait! I I want to see more Midwest guys, you know, in the PFL, the Bellators, and the UFCs and stuff like that. Because we like, there's just such a there. I know there's so many of us. I've lived in the Midwest for a long time. And there's a lot of tough dudes. So right. it'd be really, really cool for you guys to get your shot and everything. Because I know once you guys get there, you're definitely going to show out. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, it was it was so nice talking to you, Denzel. Um, enjoy the the weird weather we're getting. Um, and I will definitely talk to you soon. And we'll see you April 27th. Sounds good. Nice talking to you. All right. All right. See ya. Bye.